Good afternoon and welcome back to Whole Space. And just like that, through the magic of technology, I want to thank you for joining us for this visit to the Hawaii State Public Library for the spirit of aloha, Hawaii Libraries Light the Path. I am honored to welcome Kekalani Meyer, who is going to open today's event. Mahalo, Julius. Mahalo. And uh, welcome virtually to Hawaii. Um, what I'm going to do be in light of the this is your program title is The Spirit of Aloha. I actually picked a, a chant that was composed by Anti Pilahi Paki, and it's, and it's Aloha. So mahalo for the opportunity to share. Olu olu kamana o ha a ha a ko kulana a ho nui a lana kila aloha e a mama. Mahalo. Mahalo. Thank you so much, Tekulani. That was beautiful. Today, we are concluding a two-week national ALA tour in Hawaii. And we're doing so in the spirit of aloha. With thanks for the Hawaii State Public Library System's gracious hospitality for every, everyone gathered and for the promise of what comes next for libraries, for the library profession, and for the communities we serve. We hear so much in the media about our divided country, but this tour has shown people across the country what a uniting force libraries can be. Different organizations unite to improve and advance the profession. Local libraries and library workers belong to a, a larger ecosystem of consortia and associations that expand resources available to the communities we serve. And people of different backgrounds, socioeconomic levels and beliefs walk through the doors both literally and figuratively, of their school, academic, public, or special library to engage in the shared purposes of improving lives and building strong communities. May we all do so with the aloha spirit. So a few years ago, I was very fortunate to visit Hawaii in person. And more recently, I had a virtual visit with Congressman Case and state librarian Stacey Aldrich, and librarians across the islands. Both times, the warmth and hospitality of the Hawaii library community made a deep impression on me, and that's really the reason why I wanted to end my tour right here. So I am pleased to be back with both familiar and new faces, and I am especially honored that we are joined by some of Hawaii's strongest library champions in state and federal government. I would also like to bring in uh, State Librarian Stacy Aldrich, who is going to introduce everyone and get us started. So Stacey, if you will please. Oh, good morning, aloha. Julius, thank you so much for bringing your last final to this wonderful tour to Hawaii, to Hawaii. We are so happy to have you. And mahalo to Keiki for the ole this morning. Thank you so much for um, beginning us today because it's such an important part of how we welcome people and how we, we set the tone for how we are together. And so we're so honored to have everybody. I'm so honored to be here with my colleagues from school and special and academic libraries today awesome. celebrating with you this day and to have our amazing state leadership here as well to, to support us. Um, you know, Hawaii is unique in that we're a single 51 branch library system across six islands. We're the only single state library system in the country. And we work collaboratively with our academic uh, um, colleagues, our schools, um, to create a net that supports the ecosystem of education and learning and opportunity across our islands. And historically, Hawaii has had a focus on literacy and education. 
And um, Kiki taught me about King Kamehameha III, who um, said in essence that the, the um, success of his kingdom was based on literacy and, and education. And so we have a strong, um, strong history of supporting those institutions that support education and opportunity. And so I'm so grateful to also work in a state that has so much support from our local and um, uh, national leaders um, who realize how important libraries are. And I'm honored to have a few with us today to share a few words um, about the importance of libraries. So I'd love to start with um, a um, Congress Congressman Case. Thank you so much for taking time <laughs> to be with us. I know your mom was a librarian, so you have a, a little special space in your heart for libraries, but thank you so much for all that you do and your support for libraries. Well, thank you so much, uh, Stacy. Aloha and mahalo for uh, inviting me to speak at the ALA's Holding Space Series. I'm, I'm watching the text uh, uh, underneath and I see that our audience is not only uh, across Hawaii, but across the country. So to all of our our uh, fellow citizens across the country, um, aloha from uh, Hawaii. Uh, we have our own uh, corner of, of the world and we have our own uniqueness. Uh, and maybe so you'll hear some of that in, in the discussion today. I did want to recognize you, Stacy, our state librarian. You've done a fantastic job. You've been a great partner with my office and a steadfast supporter of all of our libraries and all of your team uh, throughout uh, Hawaii. An incredible, uh, dedicated, devoted team, as you mentioned. Um, earlier, um, my mother um, is a librarian. Uh, she came to it in a little bit different way. She, she, um, she had she she had seven children, and, and when she was finished uh, having children, the uh, uh, first thing she did was to con complete her undergrad education, and then after a few years, went back to the University of Hawaii and got her master's in library science, and then she had her own career as a as a children's librarian, and and so. Um, that will tell you a little bit about the, the family that I grew up in, which was a library family. And, and I thought maybe what I could do is reflect um, a little bit on my own, um, on my own library experience, uh, which I think is instructive. I'm sure that everybody on the phone here, uh, on the line here, has their own library stories. Uh, they probably add up to the same thing. But uh, in my case, it was uh, growing up in uh, Hilo, uh, Hilo, Hawaii, um, uh, which was a town of, and still is to some extent, a town of about 25,000. Um, when I was growing up in Hilo, which was the late 50s and, and the 60s, Hilo was about as far away from anywhere in the United States as you could possibly get, um, unless you were going to go down to, you know, Na'alehu, which was on, on, on uh, Hawaii Island as well. Um, and, and so it was in many ways um, its own little world. Um, and it would be easy in your own little world to follow it, fall into kind of uh, uh, own little world uh, thinking. And yet um, uh, everybody in Hilo tried very hard to live in a larger, larger world. And my parents uh, certainly were very committed to me, not only enjoying the best of growing up in Hilo, which was a fantastic upbringing, but also knowing that world. And the way they did that was through the libraries. Uh, and so my own, my own home in the library system was the Hilo Public Library. Uh, the Hilo Public Library, which is there and is still there in the same same location, and that's where we spent our time. That's where um, <clears throat> that's where I went after school. Um, that's where um, that's where you know my my mom took us there on like Saturday mornings, as I recall, uh, to spend a couple of hours there. We checked out books, um, and I think you know not only was that an introduction to uh, you know books and literacy and and learning itself. Uh, but the library to me was um, a, a completely, there were all kinds of people in that library, uh, people that perhaps I didn't run into on a day-to-day -day basis going to school or in my own community, but um, everybody had the same idea. And so in that sense, it was an incredibly great, um, you know, uh, uh, education in terms of diversity, uh, in terms of um, equality, if I want to, if you want to put it that way. And <clears throat> so the lessons of the libraries were not just, not just found in the books, so not just found in the in the education and the literacy, but in the in the in the social part of the libraries, <clears throat> and that is particularly important, of course, uh, in some of our smaller, more re remote communities uh, throughout our country. So, if you if you look at your 51 branches, and I would I would hazard a guess that in the course of my public service, I've been in almost all of those 51 branches. But you take a look at how those libraries are central. Uh, to, to many of the communities out there, not just in urban Honolulu, but uh, in, 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 again, Hilo, but even communities are much smaller than that. The, the, uh, the library at, uh, as I recall, Kealakekua, 
uh, for example, uh, in, in Kona, and I could go to the other islands. And so when we take a look at libraries and their importance, um, I think we look not only at the literacy side of things, uh, but we look at um, the social connectivity of libraries. Uh, and that has always been the case, uh, and that always, I think, will be the case, um, especially in a, in a world, uh, as we look at it today, uh, where it's more problematic to relate uh, um, to each other and to interact in the physical setting in the libraries. But nonetheless, here we are doing the functional equivalent of that. Uh, we saw a great example of that, as Julius referenced uh, earlier, when, when I hosted uh, through my office a webinar by the Library of Congress, a uh, presentation by the Library of Congress, uh, the oldest, uh, the, the largest library uh, uh, in, in our world, the oldest social institution in our country, an absolutely fabulous institution, um, but um, very much focused on, uh, you know, not just not just the, the the large great collections that it that it houses, but the outreach of the learning of the Library of Congress <clears throat> by remote virtual means. Um, these are areas that we absolutely have to uh, highlight as we go forward. Um, so you know, um, I, I think um, I just wanted to impart a couple of things uh, in a very short uh, inter introduction. Thank you so much to all of you that are on the call. Number one, number two. The, 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 the function of libraries and the place of libraries in our society has never been so important as we, as we in some ways live in, in what a lot of people feel is a more isolating world. Um, libraries connect us. Uh, and, and finally, um, as, we, as we face uh, you know, various uh, attempts to, to manipulate the truth out there, libraries are the holders of the truth. And so, you know, we always should be able to go to our libraries to find out what the actual facts are, what the truth are, what the great ideas are, what the great debate, debates are. And so in that sense, I'm just really, really happy to, to be able to be in a position to assist our libraries, both nationally and in Hawaii, and to be part of your ohana. So thank you for having me on. Mahalo, um, Congressman Case. We so appreciate, we so appreciate your support. and. Um, absolutely that libraries are these places of connection for people and especially now we're all trying with COVID eventually someday we'll be able to be more together but they really are centers of of being together and connecting and learning and sharing our stories so thank you so much thank you for all that you do to support us thank um, you next I am so honored to present the um, president of our senate um, Senator um, Ronald Kochi, and he's from Kauai, and also a wonderful supporter. We're so happy to have you here today, um, Senator. I would love to hear a couple words of thoughts that you have about libraries. Well, thank you, Stacy, and aloha to all of the participants across the country. To become Senate president, I'd like to think I'm a pretty skilled politician, and that normally means that you wouldn't be arguing with your member of Congress, but I find myself here listening to libraries bringing the truth that I need to disagree with my congressman. Well, he grew up in Hilo and thought it was the farthest possible place for a library. Uh, the Big Island is easternmost in the Hawaiian chain. Kauai is the westernmost, and I grew up in the town of Waimea, which is the westernmost public library in the United States. So I was literally at the end of the library chain. Uh, I was a voracious reader as a young boy and uh, our family didn't have a lot of means. We did not own a set of encyclopedias, which was the method by which research was done back in the 60s and the 70s as I was growing up. And I could walk from Waimea Elementary or High School across the street to the Waimea Library and spend hours going through books and life magazines. And, uh, you know, it afforded me an opportunity to uh, learn about the world, learn about our history, uh, all at no cost other than my library card and I had enjoyable hours. I read an article in our local paper and last week the Waimea Library celebrated its 70th anniversary. And they noted one of the employees, Alethea Goodwin, eventually married and became Alethea Kaohi and she was at that library for all of my uh, youth growing up through high school. And she is still living today. She's a living treasure on 
Kauai and is still active in the Waimea community at about 94 years of age. And uh, it was heartwarming to read the article. I can tell you that my wife, uh, after I got elected to the Senate in 2010, we live in Lehui now, and for about six years, she was a friend of the Lehui Library and was actively involved in the betterment of uh, that particular public library on Kauai. And uh, two years ago, I funded a middle school and a high school on Kauai to become 21st century STEM libraries. So how do we make the old library relevant to today? How do we make sure it's vibrant? And uh, as we've dealt with the pandemic, it's clear that we need to make that kind of commitment to our public libraries as uh, school students need to look at distance learning and connectivity is an issue. How do we increase the Wi-Fi connectivity at our public libraries so that we can give access to uh, students who don't have that capability and have some social distancing that would work. Uh, many of the libraries can create that kind of space. And just in closing on the global pandemic, as uh, almost every state across the country was overwhelmed in dealing with the unemployment insurance payouts and the inability to go quickly, we wound up setting up a center at our convention center here on Oahu and asked employees who were sitting at home, some working remotely, some unable to work to volunteer and come into the call center and step up. And I can tell you the first employees to respond and step up to the call center for the unemployment benefits uh, was or, or were the employees of the Hawaii State Library System. So I haven't had a chance to publicly thank you, Stacy, and all of your employees. So I really appreciate having the chance and the opportunity here this morning to let you know how appreciative I am for the way that you and your uh, employees step forward and uh, to let everybody across the country know, you know, what a great spirit and camaraderie our Hawaii State Library System employees have. So thank you very much. Mahalo, Senator. We really appreciate it. And it was our pleasure. We felt like we were just a collection of people to check out to help the community. And so we have wonderful staff. So I'm very appreciative to all our staff too who stepped up. So thank you so much. And thank you for sharing your wonderful experience of the Waimea Library and the history of the library. Um, the libraries on Kauai are amazing and they're, they're used very well over there. So I think thinking about our future, about how we balance physical and virtual so that we can meet the needs of our um, communities is so important. So thank you. Oh, let me let me just quickly say, I'm sorry, Congressman Case. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, uh, I think I had the southernmost library or one of the southernmost <laughs> libraries. <laughs> Naalehu. No <laughs> argument. Naalehu, no yeah. <laughs> Malo. <laughs> and then it is um, my great honor to present um, one of our, I would call one of our library nerd <laughs> representatives, <laughs> Representative Velati, thank you so much for being here today. And thank you for all the support that you provide to libraries and seeing the opportunities that libraries can play in the community. So we'd love to hear a few words from you. Thank you so much, Stacey. And there's no way I can compete with Congressman Case or Senate President uh, Ron Kochi. But what I will say about my, the, the wonderful place I get to represent, I get to represent a portion of where Congressman Case used to represent parts of Manoa and Makiki. And I'll just claim that, you know, former president of Barack Obama's grandmother was a great lover of libraries, a great supporter of public libraries. So I'm sure, uh, Maybe I crossed paths with him as a really, really young uh, uh, middle schooler or, or elementary kid in the, in the libraries. I, I just could imagine that happening. So thank you to our audience across the nation. Uh, I just wanted to just say that libraries are safe harbors and that's what you've become during this time. So mahalo, thank you so much for everything that you do for your communities. Um, I want to brag a little bit about the Hawaii State Public Library because among the state agencies, they were one of the first to come up 
with plans that really address the needs of our people remotely. They were up and providing resources immediately. They had plans to open up slowly, safely, uh, to protect our community uh, and our workers. And they continue to do that today. Um, we had a fairly successful session that we could have during this pandemic time. And we unfortunately, I don't know, or fortunately, have laid on even more tasks on the, uh, our state library system, where we're going to be looking uh, to, to them to do some innovative early learning classroom spaces for us. So even during this time, uh, we have partnered so much with our library system. We know that they are safe harbors to the community. They provide a place where, where kids can connect and um, jump off into the world and imagine um, their futures. And it's something that's so important right now. We need these places so that kids can continue to dream and to hope and to plan for the future. And I know that as we all struggle with the reopening of schools and libraries and other big activities, that the libraries are gonna be places that we will have um, uh, a connection with the community. And so thank you all for your work and I'll, I'll turn it back over to Stacy. Oh, mahalo. So, mahalo, Representative Bilotti. We really appreciate it. And um, again, libraries definitely are places that are harbors that um, accept everyone. And I think that's the special thing about libraries is they're for everyone. And so again, thank you so much for all of your support. We truly appreciate it. And I'm also um, really grateful and excited to have with us the chair of the Board of Education, which it's very tough times across the country figuring out education, but we have a wonderful chair who's working really hard with all of the partners to figure that out, but is a one and is also a huge supporter of our, our libraries. And so thank you for taking the time to be with us today, uh, Chair Payne. Um, we'd love to hear a few words from you as well, if you'd like to share. <laughs> I think you need to turn your mic on. <laughs> I always do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, um, it's so easy to uh, support our amazing librarian and our wonderful library system here because in all my years in Hawaii as an educator, I have never seen such outstanding um, cooperation with our schools and outreach to the community as we have in our um, public library system now and the times have never been as hard as they are now so I really want to honor you and your staff for the amazing work that you continue to do in partnering with our schools. Um, I am my own little library story. I noticed all of these messages coming in through the chat from across the nation and I was a kid that grew up all over the country 17 different schools before I ended up here and I always found the library as my um, touchstone whenever we moved into a community where I could ride my bike and fill my, my basket with books and go back and forth. And I really think that shaped my future as an English teacher and as a teacher in Nanakuli where I spent 10 years, I wanna um, just note that way back in the 70s, we tried to get a library and now we have an amazing, beautiful library there. And I am so proud to, um, go there and recognize what the contribution is to our community in Nanakuli where I left some of my heart after I left. So thank you so much for all that you do and know that we will continue to partner with you and support you in any way we can. Mahalo. I really appreciate it. I'm so glad you enjoy the Nanakuli Library. We actually have the branch manager with us today. Kelsey <laughs> <laughs> and Danae and um, they're doing amazing work, especially partnerships with local um, markets and um, just amazing work. So thank you so much. Thank you for all that you do and thank you for supporting our libraries and realizing how um, they are an important part of the ecosystem um, to support our families and our students. So thank you, mahalo for being here. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our state leaders. We appreciate all the support that you give us um, and we look forward to continuing that work to make sure that we continue to support our communities. And we also have with us today, before I turn it back to you, Julius, um, as I mentioned earlier, we have Kelsey Faradine. She is the um, uh, branch manager at the Nanakuli Library, which is one of our newest libraries. It's a beautiful library. Welcome, we're so glad you're here today. We also have um, Sharice Castillo, who is with Wahiwa. She is the branch manager, the amazing branch manager at the Wahiwa Library here on Oahu. And we have Michael Aldrich, who is the 
president of the Hawaii Library Association, but also librarian at the um, Brigham Young University. Yeah. And we have the amazing Galen Bopp, also from Brigham Young University um, and uh, Hawaii and Association of Hawaii Archivists. Thank you so much for being here today. And of course, we have um, Kiki, my favorite, Kiki Meyer. <laughs> We're so happy to have you here today as well. So I'm going to turn it back to you, Julius. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Stacey. I really appreciate you. And um, I want to I want to uh, sort of bring some folks in the conversation here and talk. And I think we're going to go ahead and talk about um, school libraries first. Um, with the support of a strong ecosystem and a network of committed stakeholders, we are empowered to look forward with resolve and optimism. So let's start with Kekalani. Uh, Kekalani, as you look forward to a new school year, share with us your vision for your learning community this year. Oh, Julius, for the opportunity to share, uh, it's. Well, I have to share with you, I'm a little bit conflicted because uh, with Senator Kochi, you know, from Kauai, because my mom is, was born and raised uh, in Waimea, mm -hmm. on Kauai. And then I have Congressman uh, Case about the Big Island, and it just so happens that is where I find myself today at this point in my life, on Moku Okeave, Hawaii, in Hilo. And um, so, you know, I just kind of want to put it out there. I'm kind of like right in the middle there. <laughs> um, one of, what I want to speak to, and it really goes to, it, it connects with uh, what Congressman Case um, was sharing about, you know, being here, you know, in, in Hilo and growing up in libraries is, um, as a high school librarian here at Kamehameha Schools Hawaii campus, Mokua Keawe, one of the things that I'm going to be, I always, well, to be honest, I always focus on is access. You know, that is our library language speak is how do we increase access uh, for our patrons, even more so now digitally. You know, um, and, and, for, and the reason for that is Kamehameha Schools, our Hawaii campus, we are actually offering our students three modalities of learning. One is the traditional in class, you know, on campus, in class instruction, but then also distance learning. And then the third option is a hybrid. So we're blending their, our students are able to, you know, choose both uh, learning modalities. And so for me, what I'm looking at, how do I, how am I going to increase access for both, you know, for both of this, these modalities uh, for my students, and of course, for providing that support for my, my Kumu. And uh, just to kind of provide you with a context on what we're, you know, what we're talking, what our students are faced with, some of our students actually travel from Kohala, um, and they have to get from Kohala, they go and they meet the school bus in Waimea. That's about a 30 minute drive from Kohala to Waimea, and that's where they get the school bus. And then they go, they jump on the bus and they go from Waimea to where we're at in Keao. So you're looking at a 68 mile drive, can be up to about a two hour drive that our students are, are you know, facing just to get to school. And so that's why for me, access is going to be very, that is going to be very critical for me, uh, making sure that, you know, I'm looking at all the different resources that are available uh, digitally, um, you know, and I have to be honest with you, my, my primary concern is the, our Hawaiian collection. And the reason for that is there are not a lot of Hawaiian books that are digitized. Um, of course, Ulukao, which is the Hawaiian elec elec Electronic Library, they have about over 200 books that have been you know, digitized. And so I always refer my students and my teachers that if they're looking for something online, that they should always go to Ulukao. But, you know, that's not 200 books plus is not enough. And so uh, I want to mahalo um, Stacy because, you know, I got to share with you, she's the best. Um, she's a wonderful uh, partner to work with. Um, 
And I speak to that within a professional capacity, but also as a native Hawaiian. And I'm, you know, I'm here as a result um, on behalf of primarily Nahawai Imiloa, which is a library, a Native Hawaiian Library Association comprised of Native Hawaiians in within this profession. And so um, I just want to mahalo you, Stacey, because uh, what I like, I have to be, I'm, Stacy is uh, thinks out of the box. <laughs> uh, she's a futuristic thinker. Um, she's willing to look at things, and you know, and and she's you know we can try that instead of saying oh no we can't do that you know. And so I think that's even more that's even more critical that you have to have someone. Uh, my kumu kumalehua he says Keiki we got to be able to pivot right on the dime because of what we're dealing it. We got to be able to move, you know, and and um, and so that's where we're at, you know. So for me, uh, Julius, I'm looking at access, you know, for my teachers and and my students especially. Thanks, Kiki. And 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 thinking about the future, I'm really excited to hear from some of the rising leaders within the profession. I'm going to ask each of you to say a few words about what you're doing now and what your vision is for the future of libraries. So uh, I just want to share with you, when I visited Hawaii a few years ago, I was given a tour by Ms. Bop, Galen Bop, and I'm so pleased to have her join us today as a rising leader in the Hawaii Library Association and the Association of Hawaii Archivists. Galen, it's great to see you again. Hello, Julius. Thank you for your service in ALA. Thank you um, to all of our supporters. Thanks to, you, to everyone who is uh, just really giving service above and beyond their just normal careers. I'm really appreciative of those that step out beyond the walls of the library and really serve our communities. Um, and thank you for inviting me on. So for those of you across the nation and in Hawaii, aloha. My name is Galen Bopp and I work as assistant professor and associate archivist at the Brigham Young University Hawaii campus. Uh, we have our Joseph F. Smith Library and I work in the archives and special collections. So um, even though we are a university library, we also provide services to our Le'ia community on the north tip of Oahu and along the whole Ko'olaua region. So I'm very, very excited to represent those who, like all of you, are safe havers for community members, but also very important stewards of their stories. So I'm going to be speaking to that today. But before I say anything else, I would like to begin my response with a land acknowledgement statement. And to say that as we gather today, logging in from different parts of Hawaii, it is my privilege and my duty to acknowledge the indigenous Kanaka Maoli who have traditionally cared for and continue to care for this land on which Hawaii librarians, archivists, and other information professionals now work to serve our current communities. And I believe deeply that such acknowledgement of place and culture, and in addition to increased awareness, respect, and appropriate responses to community needs is what is at the core of the future of our libraries. So I'm going to just throw out two concepts that I believe are at a root of where we can begin now, especially during this uh, pandemic time, which gives us a little bit of room to look inside, not only of our, in our own walls and our policies, but also insides into our mindsets, which is what's going to carry us through connecting with our communities in times where we need to respond to changes, changes in access, changes in ability to come, changes in ability to be in the spaces. So the two concepts I want to throw out are, uh, the first is balance, and Auntie Keiki, you touched on this um, a little bit, but balance in uniting through a balance of what we have on our shelves, the voices and the stories that we have, is the stories, is the story that we have a little weighted with one particular voice? And how are we responding to collecting other stories to balance out the story and making sure that all voices are heard? Also, um, asking ourselves not only are our community members able to find themselves in our resources, but also are the community members able to find stories of source of that place, source of that land, source of the people that were part of that place. 
And you know, Hawaii is made up of different islands, different areas of islands. My uh, area that we steward here on the north tip is going to be a very different community, perhaps than a community on Hawaii Island. So what are we doing to look in to our own communities and, and, and seek out those stories? I have talked with professionals that say, you know, it's, it's a little hard, maybe my community, I don't know how to connect with them, but I'm going to say there is, a, there is a saying that when the learner is truly ready, the teacher appears. Mm -hmm. So as librarians, as we prepare ourselves in our mindsets to be more culturally aware, to be more culturally competent, to learn about the places that we inhabit, to learn about where our community members come from, that's when we become ready to hear the stories and that's when the storytellers will appear and they will talk to us and they will acknowledge that we are ready to steward and hold their stories and that's someplace that we need to work on now during the time of pandemic really reflect hey where are the where are the gaps that i'm missing and fill those my second um concept that has really been helpful to me during this time is repatterning and when I talk about repatterning, I'm talking about not only uh, looking at policies that maybe we've just uh, had forever, that we're just in the groove of, of functioning these ways in our walls and, and with our communities, but also patterns in behavior in, uh, with our colleagues. Patterns of just, you know, we grew up thinking this way about a certain type of people, or we grew up responding to stress in a certain type of way. But in this time, again, looking and, and seeing, not even just waiting for, for a crisis and then responding. Take the time now, look at our policies, look at how we respond to each other and check to see if our current patterns are causing a complacency or a deafness that reduce and lessen our ability to hear when people are asking us for change. And, and it starts inside of us and this is a great time to take that and actively dig and evaluate our policies and our mindsets. And finally, I just want to say that our aloha is the listening and it is the taking the time to say, you know what, I, I got to shake up my own mind to open up my ability to hear and respond. And I think that's when we are able to give to our communities and that they can, they can also give to us. I know a big part of aloha and of that spirit is we are givers. We want to give everything and we want to make sure everybody's cared for, but at that same time, allow our communities to give to us approach. They are the experts. They have the stories and they complete our collections. So I encourage everyone to just continue moving forward with aloha and to, to look forward. Thank you all again for all your work. And thank you, Julius. Thanks for having me on. Thank you, Galen. Thank you for your passion and your vision. And I want to bring in uh, two more rising leaders. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting them, um, but I understand that they're both taking the library world by storm. So, Sharice, why don't you share a little bit about your work at the helm of the Hawaii Wide Library and your yes, vision? Wahiwa. Yeah. Aloha. Uh, thank you, Julius. It's a pleasure to meet you and to be able to be part of this event. Um, before I begin, I want to share with everybody my philosophy on librarianship. It's that libraries are living organisms. They must grow and adapt the, in the direction of the patron's wants and needs. So when I do outreach to the community, I always tell the audience my philosophy. This is my philosophy and also highlight how as a library, we provide more than just your typical book. Um, being part of a large system such as the Hawaii State Public Library System, like Stacy said, there's 51 libraries throughout the state. Uh, we are able to meet the wants of our patrons and, and that let them, and let them know that we're not they're not limited to just what they see in our library, even though at the moment they can't come in. But we're still able to meet their wants. Uh, we provide them with a um, uh, sort of curbside service. So, so even though we are not opening our doors, we still uh, are able to uh, pull their holds and, and so provide them with their um, library material wants. Um, 
and in, in adapting to our uh, 21st century patrons, our system um, helps close the digital, digital divide, especially which is important for, for my community. Uh, here, when we were open to our community, we provided 18 public com internet computers, Wi-Fi, printing, and a plethora of online resources. Um, even though our doors are closed, we to um, patrons reopen them up just a little bit to allow patrons to come in and use the internet, which is at this moment very important that access to, to the internet. Um, a lot of patrons come in for printing, um, you know, checking their email news, but also um, very important things like um, uh, filing unemployment claims, fi finding jobs, tax season. So that's how our library meets the wants and needs of our patrons. Um, here at Wahio, one of the recurring topics I always talk about with my staff is how do we create a community of readers? Uh, although our public internet usage is high, our circulation pales in comparison to our neighboring branches. Uh, in 2019, my library increased the number of registrants for summer reading for summer reading program from the previous year by 262 percent. It's one of my fa favorite things that's to brag about my library. Uh, my branch was one of the most successful increases of registrants for the program of all the branches on this island and for me I attribute this success to my staff. My youth services librarian literally pounded the pavement. She walked up and down this major highway in our town and she talked to everybody there um, stores and restaurants and you know got got them to be interested in this program we also worked with our relationships with school librarians in our community and got them to help us promote um, our program and we talked about you know the the library ecosystem you know if we got this the students to come in when they're really young they'll be familiar with the library and they'll carry that as they get older um, throughout their years and and help us build this community of readers and that's what ultimately what we learned from this is that in order for us to build our community readers, we need to be have that connection with the community. Lastly, it would be remiss of me if we're not talk about for me to not talk about my library community, <laughs> which to me is very important. Um, as I mentioned earlier, our system is very large and sometimes it can Get, it could be easy for us to get kind of lost in, in the mix of things. So what has helped me was, um, especially when I first started my position, with the formation of a small community of librarians. It's an informal community, but a community nonetheless. And in this group, we're, we can easily call upon each other. Um, we can lean in on each other, especially um, when you need help with certain protocol or advice on how to handle staff or, or patron situation. And in the past where I had worked in a very small library where I was a sole worker, sole librarian, I remember just feeling very isolated. And now with my little small library community, which includes librarians from, sorry, with a large variety of years of service under their belt, um, it's helpful. It's, it's very comforting too. And as we all navigate in this time of uncertainty, I'm fortunate to not feel alone in this and that we're all in this together. So thank you for allowing me to share that. Well, thank you very much, Teresa. And, um, and Kelsey, you run the Nana Cooley Library, a much anticipated addition to its community. Tell us about your vision for that library and the broader community of libraries. Hi, yes, I'm Kelsey Faradini. I'm very lucky to be the branch manager of Nana Cooley Public Library, which you might be able to see behind me. Um, and yeah, we were such a very much anticipated addition. Um, as uh, the chair of our Board of Education mentioned, uh, the community really wanted this library for a very long time. So I'm so lucky and blessed to be part of this community. Um, and, you know, when I first started out, I worked in a lot of uh, different public library branches. And, you know, being the new kid on the block, I was able to lean into my own group of librarians for support, similar to what Sharice mentioned earlier, um, whether it was just bouncing off ideas off each other, um, talking about, you know, what not to do for a new branch or just new innovative ideas for programs or collection development. Um, you know, th these connections really allowed me to kind of grow and shape uh, the Nanakuli branch to grow into what it is today. So I think 
it's really important for us as librarians and information professionals to kind of look beyond, you know, the four walls of our building uh, to find different ways to innovate and change and move forward our profession. Um, but yeah, my vision for, you know, the Nanakuli branch is very similar to my vision for um, librarianship in general is that, you know, we should continue to look beyond our four walls um, and really be connected to the community and responsive to the community. Um, you know, I mentioned previously that uh, this branch has been wanted for many years by the community and they really advocated for the branch. Um, and it was the community's voice and vision that really um, shaped the design of the building. So the architects um, built uh, the design in like a Hawaiian village setting and there's actually a separate meeting room with an outdoor stage area uh, because the public really requested that they wanted a space to hold meetings and community events just a place to really gather and um, you know promote community involvement. So yeah since we've been open for about two years and it's been a really um, cherished and beloved space really the heart of this community. Um, we do have, you know, tr the traditional programs like story times and computer classes. But, you know, prior to this pandemic, um, we had a lot of fun things going on. We had a weekly farmer's market, ukulele classes, and even genealogy workshops. Um, so previously, we our parking lot was taken over by uh, a farmer's market where local farmers and artisans could come and sell their produce. Um, and this project was really come about due to a local need within the community, because uh, Nanakuli is actually considered a food desert. So bringing in local produce every week uh, really addressed that need. And um, the program is actually run by our local community health center. So um, it was, you know, through these connections, identifying a need within the community and working together to find a, a common goal is really what um, that project was all about. Um, but lastly, I'd like to just, you know, give a shout out to my staff, uh, because every day they come into work, they make uh, connections with each and every one of our patrons. Um, and they work tire tirelessly to make this branch what it is. So um, I think it's so important to invest in our staff and um, take care of them as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I'm just going to say to Stacy, Stacy, the future looks very bright with these leaders. They aren't rising. They're leading right now. So ladies, thank you so much. Um, I want to turn to Michael now. I want to bring Michael in here. So Michael, one thing that ALA and HLA have in common is that both are acting with intentionality to be more inclusive and to reflect the diversity of our members and the communities we serve. Tell us what your vision is for HLA and the Hawaii library community. Thank you, Julius. I appreciate your inviting me here. I want to thank all those who spoke before me. I get the advantage of standing on your shoulders. And thank you for laying such a strong foundation of thought and philosophy. Um, when we talk about Hawaii Library Association, we talk about Hawaii library community. My vision, or, or as I'm looking for the future, I see less silos and I see more cooperatives. I see us working together. We have many organizations in Hawaii and the Pacific who represent a diversity of the aspects of the information profession, diversity of philosophies, a diversity of knowledge perspectives. Uh, we have HASL, the Hawaii Association of School Libraries, AHA, Association of Hawaii Archivists, Piala, Pacific Islands Association of libraries, archives, and museums. Um, Nahavai'i Imiloa, who do a wonderful job of representing our native Hawaiian knowledge perspective. We all contribute to the information table here in Hawaii, and we can all learn from each other. And it's through that learning. Galen did a wonderful job talking about balance of voices and the voice of the community. We have voices in our library community too. We need to balance, we need to build and learn from each other. And as we embrace that idea, as we model that behavior of learning and listening to voices amongst ourselves, we can do it even so much better with our community. We can do it so much better with our patrons. We model how to heal divisions. We model how to take knowledge and 
this passion for information and build a better people, a better community, a stronger community, not just from one perspective, but from all perspectives and from this vision of all contributing and all learning. So that's the future that I, I, I hope and I work for. And I have a wonderful advantage because I have such wonderful people I work with. Sharice, our previous HLA president last year. Kelsey, who, we ho who hosted the uh, HLA spring meeting last year at Nanakui Library, is a wonderful experience. Stacy, leading our state library, a wonderful opportunity of working with Gaylin. Um, I get the advantage of taking credit for the hard work she does. Uh, but really, my job is to support her and to help her and our other faculty and staff here at the library. I've learned from Keiki. I've learned from so many people since I've been here. And it's wonderful that I have this experience, but it's not just me. We should all be having this experience. We should all learn from each other. That's how we build the community of the future. Right, right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. And yeah, yeah, you do have some great folks that you have the pleasure of working with. And I want to turn it back to Stacy uh, for this question, because Stacy, can you share your vision uh, from the perspective of the state library and knowing that the state library here means something different? Yeah, the state means the public. I, I feel like the future is on this screen. <laughs> I think that everybody has had such beautiful words from Galen's finding balance to Sharice's talking about um, uh, the living organism of a library and um, Kelsey talking so deeply about community and Michael talking about how um, how we all work together and, and how we, we can actually uh, be models of for our communities and Kiki for talking about access, uh, you know, from the basic to the embeddedness, I really think libraries are about human connection. And as we move forward, how do we continue to create those human connections, but also balance the physical and the virtual in ways that help our communities to move forward and every person in our community to move forward. So. Again, I think that human connection, I, I have been a futurist. I was a futurist for a little while. I worked for a think tank in Washington, DC. And um, I used to be very techie and very focused on the technology. And I still focus, I still look at the technology. But now I think as we move forward and as we see the events that we've been experiencing together um, around the globe, that that human connection is going to really continue to be important. And as connectors to resources, not just books, which are just tools of connecting people to information and ideas, but as um, connectors of, of people, I think our future is being continuing to be these amazing connectors that bring communities together and help communities move forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, those are good words to end on. As I am ending this tour, and I should get some tissue because it's, it's sad because it's been a lot of fun going across the country. Yes, thank you, Galen, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun, but I would like to return to the spirit of Aloha and express my thanks and well wishes to the elected officials who joined us here today. Congressman Case, Senator Kuchi, Representative Bilotti, and Board Education Chair Payne. Thank you for your leadership and your support of libraries and the library communities that they serve. Thank you to our panelists, Galen, Sharice, Kelsey, Michael, Keiki. Thank you, State Librarian Stacy Aldrich for co-facilitating this conversation with me. I really did appreciate that. I got to sit back and listen to you, um, you know, and enjoy my shirt. I just would, I would love to have some palm trees and the sun behind me, but thank you so much. I would like to thank our rising leaders, those that I've spoken with today and others that I've met along this tour for inspiring and challenging us all to reach higher. I would also like to thank those leaders that light the path and continue to inspire us. We couldn't have done this without the partnership and support of the Hawaii State Public Library System and the Hawaii Library Association. My only regret is that we cannot celebrate in person, but coming together 
remains important, and I am thankful that we are celebrating in community with you today. I look forward to a, a longer visit with you and a deeper dive about Hawaii libraries real soon. Mm -hmm. When I planned this tour, I intended to travel across the country and spend time face to face with library workers, library volunteers, community leaders, elected officials, and other stakeholders. It seems like so long ago that the ease of travel was taken for granted. While we are distanced, one thing I've learned is that our community is strong. So long as we invest in it and commit to working together, that has been on display in each stop along the way. As I conclude the tour, I will take time to reflect on all we've discussed. We've covered a lot of ground and spoken with a diverse range of library communities. But I wanna to return to what we heard just a few minutes ago from our panelists about their vision for the future of libraries. I visited very different places, each uniquely special, but the vision for libraries in those places and here today has common threads that weave us together in a pact for the future. We have work to do to be sure and it's my honor and privilege to do that work with you all, with ALA members around the world and with the larger library community. Your active involvement in state and national association is important to that work. So is congressional support for libraries so we can keep doing critical work on behalf of our communities. I ask your federal and ask your federal officials to co-sponsor the Library Stabilization Fund Act. So before we get back to work, we need to celebrate. Mahalo, thank you, Hawaii State Library, friends gathered here and everyone joining us. We appreciate everyone who has hopped aboard this virtual bus during the past few weeks. These conversations will definitely continue. And before I go, I must give thanks to two very important people integral to our virtual safety, uh, uh, virtual safe travels across the country and the Pacific. I want to thank, and, and you know, this has been a tour, a bus tour, so uh, every bus must have a driver, right? And so I want to thank uh, our bus driver, Megan Kusick. Oh, there she is, Megan Kusick. Thank you, Megan. She has driven this bus across country, and believe me, it couldn't have happened without her. And Dan Lockery has been our engineer. Dan, please show your face, Dan, because this would have not happened. There you go. Thanks, Dan. We, we would not have been able to come to so many different communities had it not been for the hard work of, of Megan 